Today I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to make your own hard cider. I've been making hard cider and beers and wines for a long time now and I it's a hobby that I really do enjoy, but when I was starting to get into it, I found that it could be kind of intimidating. When you walk into that brew store and you're met with aisles and aisles of chemicals and essences and boxes, and a lot of it can be expensive and you can really waste a lot of time and money trying to figure out what you want. So I'm trying to narrow it down for you guys so that you spend the money and the time on the things that are going to work, or at least the things that I find work for me. None of these products are endorsed by anybody. This is literally just me over testing and trying everything out on what works best. And we're gonna go through what you need so that you get the best results every single time. First thing that you're going to need is a fermenter. So you can use plastic. I think that you should use glass because this cleans up a lot better. This carboy is not sanitized yet because I haven't started making the cider yet. I wanna include that in the process. Um, so you need something for everything to go in. These guys will generally run you about $30 to $60, depending on what size and type you're going for. Um, get the glass. It's easier to clean. Cleaning is the most important aspect of home brewing. If you're not going to clean your equipment and everything properly, then you could really make somebody sick, and that's not the idea behind this. This is something that you really want to be able to share with everybody. It's something, personally, that I'm very passionate about, and I love having my friends over, and they get to try what I've made and give me feedback on it so that I can make it better next time. Uh, so get the good equipment, get the glass. Be careful with it, it is glass. We have broken one or two of them. Um, but they sanitize a lot better. If you have plastic, then the sanitizer can sometimes not get into the grooves as you use them, so you have to replace them more often. Uh, the sanitizer cleans the glass a lot better. So glass carboy is my number one recommendation for that. The next thing for your sanitizing is super important. So I use star sand because it is a foaming uh, and you don't need to wash it out. You can, like as long as there's not a ton of it in it, like I'm not putting my yeast in with half a bottle of sanitizer, that wouldn't work out so well. So star sand is what I use because it's visibly seeable. You can see the areas that it has, it's been touched by the sanitizer. Uh, it's fast acting, so everything only needs to be submerged for one, two minutes. I usually do it in really hot water too to give it a little bit of an extra confidence in it um, because it is so important. Like, sanitizer, like you can ruin your entire batch, which is weeks of work depending on what you're trying to make. You can make people sick, you can make yourself sick, and it's just not something that you want to get into um, with it working with dirty equipment. So make sure that everything is clean when you're doing it. That's the most important. I really cannot stress that enough. It has to be clean. Your surfaces have to be clean. All of your equipment has to be clean. If anything touches anything else, it has to be clean. Uh, if it comes into contact with your brew, that's the main idea. So the inside of your container has to be sanitary. The top of your container has to be sanitary. And I like, obviously it's coming out of it anyway. So generally the outside gets sanitized as well. But anything that goes inside the carboy, anything that will touch the carboy, all has to be sanitized. Uh, so that's your sanitizer there. I'm gonna get these things off so I'm not intimidating you guys. And if you guys are looking to start in getting home brewing, you may want to grab a pen and paper to write this stuff down so that you have an actual list to go in to the store because they may try and upsell you and they may tell you to get stuff that you don't actually need. Or you can find a lot of this stuff elsewhere and just clean it really well when you get home. So a lot of the time you don't need to use um, like homebrew specific funnels. Funnels is another thing that is really important. When you're pouring all that sugar into the top of your carboy, it's a little bit of a smaller space, so it's a really great to have that top. Or if you're pouring your kits and your ingredients into that carboy, it just makes it a lot smoother because the last thing you want is a bunch of sugar on your floor and then a bunch of water on your floor. Believe me, I've done that. Super sticky. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you don't need to spend $15 on a funnel. You can go out and get a $2 one from the grocery store and that's fine. As long as it's big enough to be able to fit the amount that you're going to be working with. I like a bigger funnel because the molasses, um, or the, the hard sugars that are in these kits that I use can sometimes gum everything up. So I like to be able to add hot water to it and let it sit for a minute so that it warms up and moves a lot smoother. Um, so that's why I like the bigger funnel so a lot more can go into it. So that's your funnel as well. Um, for funneling, you can use this stuff for in your carboy as well as for in your bottles when you're done. 
So on our list so far, we have sanitizer, a carboy, glass, and a funnel, big one. Next, you're going to want something to stir everything with. So this is just a homebrew stir stick. Uh, it's got a stirring at the bottom and the paddle at the top. A lot of the times you'll find with glass carboys that the spoon won't fit in because this tunnel, the neck is too small, so the paddle is actually really important. So when you're sanitizing, make sure you sanitize both sides and that both sides stay sanitized. Highly important. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Sanitize, 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 sanitize. Next, we have our carboy cleaner. So remember how I mentioned that my carboy isn't clean yet? This is what I started with. I have a little bit more of a sophisticated uh, piece of equipment now. But this guy is just a carboy brush. It works absolutely amazing. You stick it in the top with a little bit of sanitizer and some hot water and you scrub the bejesus out of it because you want to make sure that you get everything off of there. My first, or I guess second tip, for cleaning your carboys is do it before it dries out. So after you're done using your carboy, I left this one because I wanted to show you guys what it's like compared to using one that's fresh out of the batch. So if you're cleaning your carboys, clean them right away, put some kind of cap on them, even just a plastic bag over top. And you should always sanitize your equipment after you've used it. So clean your carboy after the batch comes out. And then again, before you're going to use it the next time, because if you're going to put it into storage for six months, you don't want it, um, any dust or any other particulates that could be in there or any growing bacteria that might have been left over from last time that's going to contaminate your new batch. So it's great practice to sanitize it twice. So that's why the sanitizer is super important. You want to make sure you include that stuff. So on our list now, we've got the carboy brush, the spoon, the stir stick, a big funnel, sanitizer, and a carboy. When you are making up your batch, that's just basically what you need for cleaning it out and just getting started. You are going to have a couple of options for what you can use to get started. So what I'm going to be making next is going to be out of our local organic cider. Uh, when our orchard gets going, we're going to be using the things that come out of there. So we're going to be able to make uh, pear and apple ciders and all that kind of stuff. And I'm super duper excited. Cherry we're going to be able to use as well. But for now, I've been experimenting because I'm new to this. This is something that I've just tried started using. So I've been going out and trying to, a different couple of kits just so I know what goes into it, so I can understand it a little bit better, so that when my cider comes in, I know what I need to be able to do it and do it well and do it right. That way I'm not wasting all of my hard work for our cider that came from our backyard, which I cannot wait for. I'm super excited. But these are the craft kits that I really like to use. I've also used the ones that are in a can. Um, they're a lot cheaper. They are still decent, but you can definitely taste a quality difference. So if you're worried about, I think it's like a $5 difference. So for the kit that I get three cases of beer or cider out of, for that $5 difference, it's definitely worth going up to the one that's a little bit more expensive. It's still less than $30 Canadian and it'd be cheaper in the States as well. So highly recommend these guys. They do a really great job putting the kits together. I was really nervous when I first got it though, I will let you know, because I was like, where are the instructions? I don't want to open a bag of like cider until I'm ready to do it, but I want to know how to do it. Where are the instructions? So you actually have to open the bag to get to the instructions. In these pouches, there are two compartments. There's a dry compartment and a wet compartment. The wet compartment contains all of the juices you will be fermenting. The dry compartment contains your yeast, your, um, as well as your nutrients and your directions for how this is going to work. So don't open these until you're ready. If you want to have some instruction, I will go over it while we're making them and I'll show you what goes through it in these specific kits. But if you find that you can't find the directions on a kit, it's usually in the kit. So be careful when you're opening it because uh, it can be a kind of a one shot deal where you have to kind of make the kit after you've opened it. Just a little warning for you guys there, but this is what I started with and then I'm moving into this guy because I wanted to make sure that I was ready to go. I've made cider with um, organic cider before and it turned out so good. Um, the fun part about it too is that you kind of control your own alcohol level. So if I have something um, that I want to be less alcoholic, then I just don't add any extra sugar to it. It'll come out at around a four and a half, five percent. 
Um, if I want it to be a little bit stronger, so I want it to come up as a five and a half, maybe up to a seven and a half. Don't go any higher than seven because that's just rude. You don't want people to be drinking wine when they're trying to drink a cider. Like you don't want somebody to sit down with you and expect to be able to have three or four drinks and end up only having one. And that's enough. <laughs> A lot of these homebrew stuff needs to come with their own warning, and it is really important to remember what the concentration of alcohol that comes out of your homebrew kit is. For these guys, the yeast specifically that comes with them pretty much caps out at that five, five and a half percent, which is perfect for starting out. Um, but with this stuff, with your natural stuff, you have to be a little bit more um, specific about it, and that is where your hydrometer comes in. So in the homebrew store, there are two different types of hydrometers. If um, in our local area there are anyway. Um, so you can, there's one for measuring spirits and hard alcohols and there is one for measuring wine and beer. It isn't legal to brew your own hard spirits where we are. I don't think it is anywhere to be honest. This is what we're sticking with for now. Um, so the beer and wine one is what you want to go for because the one that's for harder alcohols will not give you an accurate reading. This hydrometer, we're getting all sciencey now, is one that will tell you, I'll come a little bit closer if I can get this thing out, the container. So generally they're color coded at the bottom. So you can see this one there, right here it's green. I don't know if you can see it a little bit. Um, but it has areas on it. There we go. So this is what the hydrometer looks like. You can see down the side of it, it will tell you that there is a wine section, a beer section. Um, but what you're going for is these numbers up here. Typically when you're starting around, um, like you're going for that one area will tell you that all the alcohol is been fermented. Um, so when you start down here, we're going for your finish or sorry, your start should be lower than your finish because it tells you your potential alcohol. So if I was going to go down to the 40 here, to where the 40 is there, where that, the bottom of the orange, that would be a 5% potential alcohol in a cider or a beer. If I was going to go lower than that, I'd probably be going for a wine. So it would tell me that it goes up to, I think, 15 to 20% um, alcohol, and that would be for a wine or even a mead if you wanted to make a honey mead or a maple syrup mead. You can go for that as well. Um, but the lower you are on this, the higher your potential alcohol. So that means that you have to take a first reading and then another reading again after everything has been fermented. So this number, let's say it goes down to that 40 where that orange line is there. Then when I take my second reading, it's up here at the red line. That means that everything, all the potential alcohol has been uh, fermented. It has nothing left in it that it can convert. And my cider or beer is now a 5% alcohol concentration. That's really important to know. And you have to remember as well, so at home I haven't really figured out a way to measure things after they've been carbonated because the bubbles mess with your buoyancy. That's how this measures um, the potential alcohol in it, the sugar, is the density. So with the bubbles in there from the carbonation, it messes with the readings on the hydrometer. So I haven't figured out how to measure carbonated beverages, but we typically assume another 5% after everything's been carbonated because we carbonate them in the bottles. I don't have a finish, um, like a carbonation system yet. Um, so we add extra sugar, so a little bit more sugar that goes in to add that concentration so the yeast that's left in it eats that up. The alcohol concentration gets a little bit higher and it gives us nice bubbles. So it goes up maybe 0.1% if you want less bubbles, up to a 0.5% if you're going for more of like a champagne bubble, which is kind of what I like, so I kind of go for more champagne style cider and more of a casual style of beer. So I usually end up within that 5.5 to 5.3% concentration of alcohol at the end of my fermentation. So that's kind of a lowdown on hydrometers. I know that was a lot of information. It is a little bit intimidating when you get started. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a lot of, there's a lot of equipment. A lot of people can be kind of snooty about how they make their own um, beer and cider, but that's just because they're proud Try not to take it the wrong way, just kind of learn from what they're telling you um, and take the bits that you can actually use. Don't let anybody dismiss you or tell you that you're doing it the wrong way because there are a million ways to do this. As long as everything's clean, you have sugar, 
you know your concentration and you like the taste of it at the end, you're not doing it wrong, you're doing it your way. So you need your hydrometer as well as your container to have the liquid inside. So that would be this guy here. Um, this gun I don't usually use, so he's not clean at the moment, but you can see the hydrometer is in the container, not actually touching it, which is good. And then that has to be sanitized as well because it will be touching your brew. So this needs to be sanitized, your hydrometer, as well as the container the hydrometer measures the brew in also needs to be sanitized. Um, you're going to add a little bit, so after you put your kit together in your carboy, you're going to add a little bit of the uh, concentration to this container. I like to put it inside of a bowl or a dish because sometimes you can add it in and it just kind of and goes everywhere and we want to uh, reduce the amount of mess that we make. So putting it into a little bit of a cup at the bottom is a good idea just to catch that little bit of drip over if you accidentally overfill it. And then you don't lose anything. All those drops are gonna be delicious cider and beer that you're gonna be able to enjoy in a couple of short weeks. So we don't wanna waste any of it. We wanna be able to use most of it. So that's it for the kits. These are the ones that I like to use. This is your beer, sorry, your beer and your cider. Uh, this one's a Pilsner and then we've got our strawberry lime. I've also done mixed berry and the apple cider as well, but because I'm going to be doing an organic apple cider, I'm not gonna be doing the regular, um, the spice cider, or the regular apple cider, because there's no point when I can do it a little bit more tasty on my own. So that's those guys. And that is also the point where you pretty much have everything you need to get started on doing your own homebrew. The last thing you would possibly need before you let it sit and ferment would be any adding any additional sugar if you find that when you use your hydrometer, it is not to your liking. So if you're sitting at a 3%, if the kit's a little bit older, um, instead of the 5% that you want, you can add a specific amount of volume of sugar to be able to up that um, potential alcohol content, which is a calculation based off your hydrometer, but I will cover that later. You know, really shouldn't be messing with that if this is your first or maybe even 10th time trying this. Um, you should really figure out the kits that you like first, and it can take a little bit of time before you find the ones that you really do enjoy. So save that for later, so you really shouldn't be messing with sugar. But if you're at that point, you can increase the amount of alcohol that comes out of your kits just by adding a little bit of table sugar. These guys are two different varieties of um, stoppers, so you would add water to the max. I usually put sanitizer in it. Uh, just because it's readily available and it keeps it clean. Uh, you can also just put regular water in it. Uh, if you have a well, I would recommend using the sanitizer or a little bit of the sanitizer in your well water um, just to kill any natural bacteria that might be in your well. It may not be harmful for you, but putting it in a fermentation live area where you're going to add yeast may not be the most beneficial for making it into a cider or beer. It might make, give it a funky taste. So. If you can use bottled or natural spring water, uh, you'll get the purest taste from your alcohol because the quality of the ingredients you put into it is the quality that you're going to get out of it. So for the extra $3 at the store, if you can get a bottle of water to do this, I would highly recommend doing that. But again, not required. If you don't wanna do that, I've done it with my tap water and we're on a well and I've had no issues. You just have to make sure that you clean and sanitize everything really well um, just to make sure that you don't have any potential for anything to take over. Uh, so there are two different styles. Uh, they do the exact same thing. This one has a loop in it. This one's just a tube. Uh, you stick them in the top of the carboy and they bubble as the fermentation process goes through. So what happens is that it's an airlock. So the liquid stops any air from coming into your carboy and having any uh, potential bacteria or animal hair, things like that from getting into your brew and it allows the CO2 uh, to escape. So the byproduct from your yeast turning that sugar into alcohol can escape and it doesn't spoil um, your kit because also if you let your kit sit on yeast or if you let it sit with a lot of CO2 in it, it can spoil it as well. So in order to avoid that, you have to have some ventilation, but you also don't wanna add the air and the airlock. So make sure that there's water in there, make sure that they're sanitized on the bottom, on the inside, everything before they go in. I have had 
over fermentation where this goes and like it was all over my ceiling and all over my kitchen it was crazy so you do need to sanitize these because it is potential for your um your kits to go inside of these it was a little bit of a personal experiment that went a little awry but it can happen so just make sure that they're really clean so if you are keeping track of what you guys need uh, up to this point, this is for up to fermentation. So when you are ready to stick it uh, in a dark room that's at roughly 20 degrees, as your kit will tell you, to leave it for a certain amount of time to let it ferment. For beers and ciders, it's typically a week or until it stops bubbling or until you use your hydrometer and all the sugar is gone. Totally up to you on how you want to do that. Um, but you are going to need airlocks, a carboy, a spoon, star stick, your funnel, your sanitizer, your brush, your glass carboy, the kit that you want to use, the hydrometer and the hydrometer tube. They typically come together or are side by side in the store, so you'll be able to see them there. Uh, you're going to not use any additional sugar at this point, so don't worry about that. So that should be all that you need. You're going to now take your fermentation kit that's all ready to go, and you're going to leave it. It's gonna sit there and it's gonna do its own thing. That's part of the reason why I love home brewing so much is because I get to do an hour of work, set it aside for a week, come back, check on it. If it's not ready, you'll leave it for another couple of days. If it's ready, then you do, it's a little bit longer when you're bottling it, maybe one to two hours, depending on what you're doing and what kind of equipment you have. And then it's done. You've got like three cases of beer. I did, when we first, uh, things started going crazy in March, I did a bunch of kits and a bunch of ciders and stuff just to try and figure out which ones I wanted because I had the time to do it and it was a really great process and a really great learning experience, but it was really cool too to have basically a whole year's worth of booze from one or two months of experimenting. So it's a really great way that we've been able to cut back on a lot of our bills as well. We do like to go and hang out with friends and go to barbecues and stuff like that or host people and it is something that I really do enjoy sharing with everybody so that the fact that I can have people come over and I can offer them a glass of wine or a glass of beer uh, with dinner and not have it cost me $10 is amazing. So I think that's really great. It's a really great host thing. It's kind of cool. You can tell people that you've been able to do it yourself and it's something that you can you find you probably get pretty passionate about once you get into it because it is something that if you really enjoy crafting this is something that's kind of cool that you can take to the next level. After you your kit has started to ferment, you are ready to bottle according to your kit. The only things you're going to need to bottle are your sanitizer again because everything needs to be sanitized. You need to sanitize your bottles. I just, I'm just i reusing the bottles. I'm using glass bottles that I can see into really well um, so that if there's anything growing or anything that I don't want in them, I can see it right away and we can get rid of them. It's not worth your time to be scrubbing and going crazy over cleaning the bottles if they're not clean when you're if like with a quick rinse and a little bit of sanitizer get rid of them because you're going to be sitting there forever and you have no idea how deep that bacteria has gotten into the bottle so it's safer just to chuck it and get a new one a lot of my friends i get them to after they've bought a fresh case of beer i will get them to really well rinse out their bottles and if they give me a case then that's really awesome and I know that they've been well taken care of so that's really great and it hasn't cost us pretty much anything as soon as you start homebrewing a lot of people come out of the woodwork and say hey do you need bottles hey do you need this blah, blah, blah. which is really amazing because they really enjoy your passion as well once you get into it and they like to share it they like to be able to come over and have that glass of beer or wine with dinner with you and it's a really good experience and they get to contribute to it as well without really having to do any of the work just the enjoyment so that's a lot of fun for them too so beer, bottle, I like to go, the ones around here, the clear ones are typically as well, um, the ones that are the pop-off. We don't have the equipment to do twist-off bottles. They're a lot harder to come by and I think it's a lot more specialized equipment. So when you're just starting out, go for ones that are pop-top only, which are typically your clear bottles. We have our caps. We get like 150 of them for five bucks which is perfect, so that's great. These guys are one-time use, so if you bend them or anything like that, you have to get rid of them because they won't give you a proper seal and it will spoil the beer. Make sure that every single one of those that you're going to use are sanitized. 
I like to, uh, to count out how many beers I'm actually going to get and then sanitize them because often if you have ones that you've sanitized and then forget to dry them out, they can get rusty um, and then you can't use them anymore anyway. So to avoid any waste, it's better to put them into the sanitizer as you need them as opposed to throwing a bunch of them in and then hoping that you have the right amount. Uh, this guy here is a capper. It's just a plastic crimper. It goes around the bottom of the bottle. Um, it is our standard one around here. I wish it was metal because it would just make me feel like it would hold up a little bit better, but that's all it is. So you put it on the top of the bottle and you crimp it down and it pushes the bottom onto the bottle so that it holds all the carbonation and everything in there as well. There's a little magnet at the bottom here and that's where your cap goes. Uh, and that's kind of how the whole thing comes together. When we carbonate ours, we put a teaspoon of table sugar into these and then we cap them because we carbonate in our bottles. You can also carbonate another way, but when you're starting out, don't worry about that. Putting, you can, I also get like pre-measured out like beer to like drops. It's like one beer per drop. Those are like $5 for a bag of, I think it's like 30. You're gonna get three bags worth out of one kit that cost you $20. So you're paying almost as much for the same, like to put the sugar in the bottle as you are for the entire kit. To me, that just doesn't make any sense when you can just put a teaspoon of sugar into the bottle that you're using. Depending on the size of the bottle, you can go bigger and like use growlers and stuff like that. But this is like a standard size beer, standard size bottle, you teaspoon of sugar, you're good to go. And sugar costs you to like a dollar a kilo or less. So in my mind, it's a lot easier just to use the sugar in the funnel than it is to go with the specific drops. Um, and that's all you need. So sanitize it really well. Um, I think the other thing that I was gonna add to, all oh, right. The other thing that you'll need for doing the, uh, putting it into the bottle, the bottling part, uh, is just a, a tube. I don't usually use this tube. You can see it's kind of gnarly. Um, I've got another, ooh, that was loud. I have another piece of equipment that I use, um, but when I was getting started, I just used a piece of tubing that would fit into the top of my carboy as well as the bottles uh, when they're on the floor. And that's pretty much it. So you guys have gone, that's all the equipment that you're going to need for your beer and cider kits. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys next day. We're kidding.